Hello and welcome to this video where I will show you how you get the NAT status of open instead of restricted. So I had to play with a friend and we couldn't join each other at any point. Or we could actually join each other for like 10 seconds and then one of us get kicked. And it was pretty much because I have the NAT status of restricted. But now after a lot of research and trying to do a lot of different things to get this net status to be at least moderate, I didn't expect it to be open. I will now share how I did it. So the first step, which is actually the most important step of them all, is to make sure that your internet provider have actually enabled port forwarding. And it might sound silly that they don't have it by default, but that was actually my case where I needed to contact my internet provider to say that I want to port forwarding. But before you do that, you could go and just research it yourself to see if it's a thing where you need to contact them. And in my case, I use a internet provider called Hyper. I am in Denmark, so they provide internet for Denmark. And then you just say port forwarding. So you type the name of your internet provider and say port forwarding. And in my case, Hyper have a guide to the port forwarding. I know this isn't Danish, but you don't have to understand it. But I hope that when you type your internet provider and then say port forwarding, that they also have a guide to what you should do. And if you can't find anything, then go and contact them and try to ask, do I have port forwarding enabled? Or should you as internet provider do something for me? So when I click this one, it says that you either need a dynamic or a static IP address to be able to use your port forwarding in your router. But at, as a default, when you have a connection with Hyper, you use something called CGNAT. And when you have this, you are not able to go and port forwarding. Oh, and just a little tip. If you don't have a lot of time, let's say you want to play now, you sit with your friend, you want to play now just like we did, then go and use your mobile hotspot. Because in most cases, you can't go and get a moderate NAT type. But if you want to go and set it up more solid so it works on your own home network, then just go and follow along here. If your internet provider have this kind of setup, then you want to go and write to them, write an email and tell them that you want to be able to port forward. In this case, I just want a dynamic IP address and it was free instead of a static that cost uh, money every month. But now when that is done, you want to go into your router and actually set up a couple of things. You want to find the IP address to your router. And in my case, it is this IP that is my IP address for my router. If you don't get anything with this, you need to go and either look at your router because it should have a label where it says what the IP address of your router is. And if it doesn't have it, then you can go and open the command prompt. So hit the Windows key, type CMD and open command prompt. And you really don't have to be afraid of this. We just need to write IP config and then hit enter. And then you get a lot of details here, but the one you want to look at is the default gateway. And then you have a address like this, but you actually need this one. And as you can see, this is the IP address to my router. So when you have this, go and type whatever it says in here inside your browser so that you can connect to your router. And from in here, you have to have a username and password. It should also be labeled on your router. So in my case, it's called admin. That's a pretty standard username for a router. And then you just want to go and type the password. And now when you are inside your router, your your router will look very much different than mine if you don't have this Sixel router brand. But what you need to find is your menu. You can have it everywhere because the layout is different from router to router. So, but this is my menu up here. It's a hamburger menu where I can just go and expand the network settings. And the first thing we need to make sure is enabled is called something called the UPNP. And in my case, it's under the home networking. But if you cannot find it, just go and, you know, click every option you have. In my case, when I go inside something, I have a menu up here also. And it's actually up here. I found it, but it was under network settings, home networking. And then it's up here, UPNP. 
And the reason you have to enable this is because it will automatically go and create the TCP IP protocol and all the ports that we need. It should open and lock them as we go. So I just opened the game to actually show you if the game is down here. I actually showed you uh, if you turn this off, you, you need to remember right now I have port forwarding enabled uh, the right way and we will look at that in just a moment. But if I go and say UPnP and turn it off, then inside my game, you can now see I just have a moderate NAT status. So just by only using port forwarding, you can get this moderate NAT status. But if you enable the UPnP, then you should be able to get a open NAT status. So I will just go and enable this again and say apply. And then you can see when I actually just go into the game again, it's already open again. So in that way, you can actually just go and say if you want to have a moderate or a open NAT status. But now let's go to the port forwarding part. And I think if I just want to show you one more thing about this UPnP, then you can see here it have some addresses down here. There is nothing now because I just enabled it. But I think if we refresh this and go to the UPnP again, you can see it actually found it automatically my uh, IP address for my PC and what port it should use right now. So it is a really nice thing to have this universal plug and play. But let's go and look at the port forwarding. So inside my menu here, on the network settings, I have this NAT. You can already see here, we have port forwarding. And as you can see, I already have a lot of records. I also have a PS5 that I have set up. But what you need to look at if you wanna play this game, you need to go and look at these five. It is the port forwarding for my PC and specifically for the game. And if we just look at one thing at a time, we have the service name, which is actually just a name I have wrote myself. It it really doesn't matter what you call this, but it's just to have some structure. <laughs> it's actually a little bit bad structure, but I have a PC, PC UDP, and a number two and three and four. But if we look at the first here, the PC, then we need to go and target the IP address of my PC. And the way you find this address is again, go to the command prompt here, and you can actually go and see it already. If you still have this IP config open, you can go and see the IPv4 address, which is your computer's local network address. So not to be confused by your public IP address, this is your local IP address, and that is what you have to use. I know it's a little bit off topic, but if you go to Google and say, what is my IP, then you can actually have a service here saying what your IP address is. And this is my public IP address and we don't want to use that. So back in the router, we want to target this port and it should be with the protocol of TCP. So the way you do it, in my case here, you have to add a new rule. I don't know what your version of your router says, but you should be able to add a new record inside the port forwarding. And in here, you can see we can type a service name it might be called something different on your router, but there should be a name that you can type in. Then we need a port. And when you type that in, you might have this translation start port also. And because we can target a range of different IP addresses, we could go and say like 30,000, but we just want to go and open one port. So we will say the same port again. Then you need to go to the IP address here and put in the IP address of your PC. And this was mine IP address. And then the protocol should just be TCP in this case. And a very important thing is to also go and set it active up here. If you have a active button in your layout, then go and click it. It actually gave me a lot of problems because I didn't see this. So you need to enable the new rule that you're making and then just go and say, okay. In my case, it's already set up. So I'll just say cancel. And that was actually the first record here. So the second one is actually a range of ports. So you can see we start with this one and end with this one. And then you want to go and make it UDP. So you can go and add a new rule and again, put in the name. I think it was called this. And then you say the start port 
I don't really remember what it was, but something like this maybe. You could just see the table we had before. It, it is all the ports you need to, to set up. And again, the IP address of your computer. And in this case, it was UDP. And then remember to set it active and say OK. Again, I will just click cancel. It might be a little bit different on how you put in your start port and end port. It might be a dash between uh, you have to write. So like you type this and say dash and then this and then you have the range. But when you set all this up and you know that your internet provider has enabled port forwarding, you should have a moderate connection. And if you also go and turn on the UPnP, then you should get a open NAT type. So I hope this worked for you. And remember that if you really need this to work right now at a moderate level of NAT type, then go and use your phone to see if that works. We could play like two hours on the phone, then it would just go and jump off and it was a little bit unstable, but you, at least we was able to play some, but else just go and have a nice day. Bye.